What is up, MMA fans? This is Tudor Leonte for Sherdot.com. And today I have the pleasure to talk with UFC fighter, Mr. Johnny Munoz. Hello, Johnny. How are you today? What's up, man? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here on the show. Uh, just another day here. So let's go start a new week. How, how have you, you know, how have you started your week so far? Well, so far, you know, this is, well, Monday is the first week, I guess, of uh, training and stuff. Right now, I'm in Tijuana, Mexico right now. Um, so, because I train out here. Uh, I also train in Southern California as well, but I've been out here a lot. Um, but it's going good right now. I just, you know, had a little light breakfast. I'm going to go train in about an hour. Uh and then get the day going. Today's going to be a hard day. And then so got to make sure we get the right foods in me. Um, are you preparing for anything in particular in Tijuana? Mm, what do you mean particular? I don't know. Are you training uh, boxing, grappling, uh, or, you know, MMA in general? Oh, just everything, man. You know, it's MMA. We got to do it all. Like I got wrestling or jiu-jitsu practice and wrestling practice. Then, uh, you know, striking later on in the evening. So it's everything. You know, every day I'm always working everything, you know, strength, conditioning, uh, getting it all in. So You are now scheduled to face Tony Gravely on June the 4th. Um, you told me that you are in Tijuana, but are you still training at uh, Sequence Jiu-Jitsu, right? Yes, yeah, that's still always my home gym, uh, Sequence. I'm, that's always going to be my gym. Um, I, I'm there like half the week. Half the week I'm in Tijuana. Sometimes I mix it up. Uh, so I'm always on the road to travel to train because the problem like in California, man, like, uh, California is so not like spread out, kind of spread out. There's like cities everywhere. So there's a bunch of gym. So a lot of the fucking, like, excuse my language, but a lot of the fighters are just like pussies, man. They don't want to get together and train. Uh, like I'll invite, like I've invited like UFC fighters, like, Hey man, like come train. They always give me the run around or leave me on scene. Like they don't want to, they don't want to train. So. Uh, the cool thing about coming over here in, in Tijuana, like the sparring room could be up to like 50, 50 people in there. You know what I mean? 60 people. And there's a lot of people my close to my way in there, different styles and everybody. It's a, it's a war zone in there. So it's, it's what I like about it. I like to spar hard. And uh, yeah, it's, it's what I really enjoy. You, know, you don't get nobody complaining about, oh, you're going too hard, this and that, uh, because that seems to be the problem sometimes sparring in the state. Who are uh, some of the names who actually answered, you know, your call to trade together? My question is, who are your sparring partners? Okay, so like my, I have a lot of sparring partners, but specifically for this camp, uh, Juan uh, El Molo Gonzalez, uh, Juan Pablo El Molo Gonzalez, he's been helping me a lot uh, for this fight. Uh, he's been in the game a while. He hasn't got to call the UFC yet, but in the, like the Latin American scene, he's been around uh, a long time. Uh, uh, Christian Kionis, he's in the UFC as well. Uh, I've been sparring with him. Um, you know, Juan Diaz, another upcoming kid. Uh, even some of the guys that just got in the contender series, like Edgar Chaitis, uh, Juan uh, Luna. So just there's, there's a bunch. I don't want to miss any names, but like there's a lot of good talent coming out of, over here. Like uh, just like last Saturday, uh, Loco Torres just won his fight. By knockout, he's out of the same gym over here. So there's a lot of uh, promising talent coming out of Tijuana, and it's cool uh, to train over here, and I get in touch with my roots as well. Um, yeah, I mean, for you, is my, is, it must be quite, you know, pleasant to be able to travel, you know, between the United States and uh, Mexico. Um, are you expecting the UFC to go back there anytime soon? Uh, hopefully, it'd be cool. Um I've heard they, they are, but I'm not really sure. I think they were, during the Brandon Moreno fight, had he won that fight, I think uh, that was the plan from what I heard, but he lost the fight by decision. I thought he won, but uh, I can't, you can't change that now. So I don't know if that kind of room plans. It just, that was just things I was hearing. So I'm not too sure, but hopefully it would be cool if they came back. I'd love to fight uh, on uh, Mexico soil. Um, who is going to be in your corner for this fight? Yeah, so uh, my corner is going to be, you know, my father, he's my head coach, John Munoz Sr., uh, my cousin, Alan Superglue Martinez, and then my wrestling coach, Jason Conan. That's who will be in my corner for this upcoming fight. 
Um, you, you know, getting back to your UFC career, you lost to Nathan Menes in your UFC debut. Uh, but I recall that it was quite a hard fought battle, you know, as far as I recall. Um, what was going on, you know, at the time? Yeah, so, I mean, it was a lot of circumstances, you know, you know, I took that fight. It was Thursday night, I believe, of that week, of the fight week. I accepted that fight. Um, yeah, so I didn't even know. The fight wasn't official, really, until, like, Friday early morning. So I was on my way to Vegas, driving there, and the fight wasn't even official, but they told me to be there, just get there, do the SADA test and all that stuff, and we'll see what happens. So I was okay. So I went, whatever, and then – I never really got a confirmation about it, but then I was like, okay, well, I'm here already, so I might as well start cutting some weight a little bit. We fought at 145, and yeah, man, it was just, everything happened so quick during, like, it was so crammed in there, you know, everything that the guys have to do on fight week, I had to do, like, in one day, so I got to, like, do the weigh-ins, like, you know, some media, photos, give you the gear, just a whole lot going on in one day, but I wouldn't take none of it back. It was a good experience. Uh, but yeah, even in, in the fight itself, it, I felt like it wasn't the the best performance I could display. It wasn't the real Johnny Munoz out there fighting. But even with those circumstances, even I thought I did enough to pull it out. But that's the name of the game. You can't leave it in the hands of the judges. Actually, no, fuck that. I'm, I'm not. Everyone <laughs> always, everybody always says that. Don't leave it in the hands of the judges. But not fuck that. The judge judge system needs to be cleaned up. Actually. You know, everyone, like, like, it just needs to be cleaned up. Everyone knows how terrible it is. How many fights have we seen already this year where it's like, whoa, like, that was crazy. And it's just going to continue happening. So I feel like they need to really clean that up. I don't know, get people to train in there or explain the the, the point system better. Because I think it's, it's uh, it doesn't make sense. I don't think anybody really understands the point system. If the average person watching at home doesn't understand what's going on, Uh, there's there's a problem because those people don't train the average person at home could watch any other sport and understand like okay this is this many points like in football basketball baseball you know you, uh, you hit a home run whatever but mma is like super complicated so i yeah. feel like it's it's something that needs to be cleaned up you know keep it fighting how it is but i think it, it needs to really be narrowed down to what it is we're doing because sometimes you'll see even fights on the ground like the guy dominating the guy on the ground, but then they get back on the feet and the guy's getting maybe dropped or something. And all of a sudden that other guy won or it's, it's the other way around as well sometimes. So it's just so confusing. I totally agree with you that, you know, the MMA rules and the judging scoring criteria are not very clear at the moment. And we see some very questionable decisions. But as far, you know, uh, as I can tell you, all the people at Sherdog scored the fight in your favor on that occasion. And uh, I believe you're quite surprised by that result eventually, right? You know, when yeah. they announced that your opponent won by, by unanimous deci decision. Yeah, I was surprised. But when I heard unanimous, I was like, okay, I got it. Like, I, like it's, it's in my favor, whatever. But then they gave it to him. I was like, what the heck? Uh, so, yeah, I was confused about it but i'm not taking nothing away from my opponent you know what i mean uh he was cool he was respectful tough opponent he's doing well so maybe we'll meet again in the future but i feel like you know things happen for a reason sometimes and uh i feel like with every experience i have in life whether it's uh in my professional aspect or personal i'm always looking to improve um then bounced back against uh, jamie simmons uh, were you expecting to finish your opponent by submission on that occasion Yeah, I was expecting a finish. I was submission, even like a, a knockout. Like I, I'd always look, okay, where can I finish the, the guy? But I never like fantasize like where, like, oh, I'm going to knock him out or I'm going to tap him out. I just look at the, the opponent, like how he fights, and I see what, I see what opening he's going to give me. So uh, any opening, like I'm, very, I'm a pretty smart fighter, so I'm pretty good at seeing openings, and I take advantage of them. It has been almost a year since you last competed. Was it your choice to, you know, to stay put for so long or was it because, you know, you didn't find any opponents? Yeah, it wasn't my choice. There's things weren't getting matched up right. Uh, there was a couple dates, but the fights didn't go through. Like it was like, I think December, then January. 
and then March, but none of them lined up. So I'm just thankful now to finally get a fight, and I'm hoping to be active because uh, it's a little frustrating not being able to fight, you know, during the time like that because I was like already in. Uh, so I'm hoping, like, you know, after this fight, get going. So that's what I'm looking for, make a statement and, and start getting some fights in this year. How was it for you to have such a long training camp, you know, for, for this fight? Uh, I mean, it's training's always tough, and you know what I mean. But the thing about me, I'm always training, so I don't. I okay. enjoy training. I'm always, I'm always training. Like, I never take breaks. Uh, maybe that's sometimes my problem. My coach tell me you got to learn to like take breaks sometimes. But like, I'm always training, man. Like, I don't. I know there's a, there's a lot of these fighters like in, in the UFC. Like these guys don't. These guys don't fucking train. Like the more, I've been in the sport a long time since a kid, but I just see it more. Like the more like I travel to train. Like I go to Vegas a lot to train. Like a lot of these guys are just lazy fucks, man. They don't they don't train. Like it, they're sore one day, they won't show up to sparring. It's like, come on, man. You got to be able to show up on your worst days and everything. And I don't know. So for like for me, like I'm always training. Like I was in Brandon Moreno's fight camp, uh, which that was a tough fight camp. Uh, And after that, I just kept training, training, hoping to get a fight. So that's the thing with me. I'm always training. And and when I say about, like, these other fighters, like, not training, it's, like, it's true because a lot of these guys, you know, they, they put a persona on interviews and stuff, and they think – they make people think they're a certain way, but it's not really true. And, like, for me, I just – sometimes it's, like, I always say, like, I'm going to be the best fighter in the world, but sometimes it's, like, man, I just want to be the realest fighter in the world and not bullshit the media, not bullshit anybody. Listen, a few more, then I, I let you go. Uh, where does your nickname, Kid Quembo, uh, come from? Yeah, so Kid Quembo, it's, uh, it's actually Norwegian. Um, I'm not okay. Norwegian, but uh, so my father was John Munoz, but uh, when he was a kid, his parents split up and then his mom met um, Kavimbo, a great Kavimbo. So he ended up adopting my father. And then my father became John Kavimbo. Uh, so that when I was born, like I'm, I'm Johnny Munoz. That's what's on my uh, like birth certificate, everything, John, Mun John Munoz Jr. Uh, but the kid Kavimbo thing came because like uh, on that side of the family, I was like, I think the only grandkid or like, yeah, the, I was the only grandkid or the youngest grandkid, something like that. And but the kid Kavimbo and then, So it's kind of just stuck with it. But like for me, like Kid Kavimbo, it means like, you know, a kid uh, is somebody that has, you know, dreams or whatever. You know, when you're a kid, you have a dream. You see something, I want to do this. Kids have all these crazy imaginations, right? And for me, that's where like a lot of the Kid Kavimbo comes from, like imagination and vision, visualization. I want to be the best because like, I had that dream since I was a kid. And so that's what like what it means for me because once you become a man, You, you become complacent a lot of times, you know what I mean? You maybe get married, you, you land this big job or you complete a lot of things. So now you're complacent, you're happy. You don't have the same hunger. And now your hunger is more focused on providing for your kids or your wife or whatever it is, or your job or your coworkers, helping other people out. And within my case, like I'm still, I'm working on my career. Of course I help other people out, but you know, I'm, I'm, I still had that kid dream in my head that I need to accomplish. And sometimes the road's very, uh, it's a very selfish road, a very selfish journey. Some people can't understand it, but it's fine because it's, it's all going to pay off in the end. And you seem quite motivated, you know, to, to be in it for the long haul. Um, what about your workout song? Have you already uh, thought about it? Uh, Yeah, I was thinking about it. I'm not too sure. I think I might come out the same one I came out last time. It was uh, South Park Mexican uh, Wiggy Wiggy. That's what I came out to last time. I don't know. It just uh, it really like, I don't know. It felt good walking out to it. I walked out with it. My last fight was we were in Houston, Texas, and the artist is from Houston, Texas. So like, I got a good crowd uh, response to it. Yeah. yeah. And so I might come out to this fight, even though it'll be in Vegas, but I don't know. The song was real cool. The card on which you're fighting is headlined by the heavyweight clash between uh, uh, Zarzinio Rosenstreich and Alexander Volkov. I would like to hear your pick for this fight. You know, both those guys, I don't know, man. They both got like, they're both heavyweights hit hard. So I feel like it, it, it could always end super quick. 
Mm. I'm kind of leaning towards Rosen Street strike. I don't know. I feel like everyone thinks because he got knocked out by Ngannou super quick that oh, he's not. You know what I mean? But I mean, Ngannou's knocked out a lot of people, so I'm I'm kind of leaning leaning towards him. I feel like uh, I think he's a shorter fighter, correct? Right? He, he's a shorter fighter a little bit. Yeah, I believe Volkov is quite tall. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like you can get in. Volkov's tough too, but I feel like he cracks under pressure sometimes when he's getting guys start putting on him. So I feel Rosenstrike is going to take it. That's what I'm leaning toward. Johnny, do you have any less messages? No, man. Just I appreciate you taking the time to do this interview. Anybody watching, uh, don't be sure to you know follow Sure Dog. Follow uh, follow me on social media at Kid Kavimbo. I'm on Instagram and Twitter more. You can find uh, my fan page on Facebook. Johnny Kid Cavimbo Munoz, and I also starting to do a YouTube channel, uh, Kid Cavimbo. I do vlogs on there. Uh, so you guys can follow me on there. I appreciate everyone's support. And I, like I always say with my slogan, aquí estamos. Uh, which means, aquí, uh, which means, sorry. Aquí estamos. So it's something I start saying. It's actually in Spanish. The correct way to say it would be aquí estamos. Ah, okay, okay. I cut out I, I cut out the ES, more slang. Aquí estamos, which basically means we are here. Like we are, we are, we are out here. Okay, okay. Sorry, I I know a little bit of Spanish, but I was actually thinking about. I didn't want to say anything wrong, so I I just asked. Muchas gracias, Johnny. Thank you very much for giving me a little bit of your time today. Mucha suerte. Uh, best of luck with your upcoming fight. Hopefully, I'll hear again from you in the future. Eso es todo. Appreciate you, bro. Yo. Have a nice, have a nice day. Bye bye.